Well, welcome to the Tipping Point program. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Mark Hitchcock, and um, I'll be uh, your guest host today on the program. Um, I'm the pastor of Faith Bible Church in Edmond, Oklahoma. I'm a professor at Dallas Theological Seminary. I'm also a contributor here on endtimes.com, and uh, Jimmy's asked me to, to uh, fill in for him today, and it's a great privilege uh, to be with you today and to talk to you about something that uh, has been on my mind a lot. I haven't written an article or, or, or done a video on this yet. I'm uh, really looking forward to today's time to kind of go in a little bit of depth today and talk and kind of weigh in on an issue that uh, has been out there in the news a lot lately, I'm sure a lot of you have seen, and that is the whole topic of, of UFOs, of unidentified flying objects. Um, they're called, uh, a lot of times they're called UAFs now, but still the old terminology is still just UFOs. And as, as many of you know, I'm sure you've seen in the news that the government here recently has kind of done a, a, a data dump where they just let out all of this information uh, that's been previously classified about UFOs. And some really startling videos have been released and on a lot of the major uh, news networks, they've had you know experts come on that they're interviewing, uh, talking about uh, just this whole phenomenon of, of UFOs. And the one thing I've noticed about all this is, is it's a lot of things happening that are unexplainable. And different people have kind of their different theories about all this, but no one really knows for sure. It's just kind of like in the almost like the beginning stages of people really trying to um, understand and discern what's happening. So I thought, I would, again, I will weigh in on this today. And what I want to do is I want to just talk a little bit about UFOs in general and tell you a story about kind of my interest in this and um, how I came to um, have a little bit more information about this. And I want to draw some conclusions at the end that I think will be helpful for you. So basically, uh, my interest in UFOs started about 30 years ago. Uh, my wife, Cheryl, and I, uh, we drive uh, every year out to Rio del Sol, New Mexico. Um, Cheryl's parents... Uh, for many years, had a, a house there in an area called Alto, which is just north of Rio Doso. We still go out there every year now, but we'd go out there all the time uh, back then and stay with our parents. And uh, back in the day, when we'd drive out there, you'd go and you'd have to drive through the town of Roswell, New Mexico. Now, if you know anything about UFOs, you immediately know that's the UFO capital of the world. Now, when we go now, there's a road that takes you around Roswell, so we don't really go through the town. You kind of miss the traffic. But back then, you had to go right down through the middle of Roswell. And we started going out there in the early 90s. And uh, for about five years, we, we would drive through, through Roswell and you'd see, you know, all kinds of, of souvenir shops and places with all kinds of memorabilia about UFOs. And there were a couple of large museums there as well. There's one called uh, the UFO Enigma Museum and another one called the International UFO Museum. And going through Roswell and seeing those kind of just got me interested in the whole topic of UF, UFOs. I was wondering, you know, what's going on here in Roswell? Why are people so interested in this? So start, I got a few books that I read that, that helped me out a bit. And uh, we, we stopped a couple of times and would go in those museums. But, but one of the times we were there, was it was August of 1996. I decided I was going to go out and see the supposed crash site where this alien space craft supposedly crashed in 1947. And so in one of the museums there, they had a man you could contact and you could go out there and set up a time with him to meet. And he'd take you out to this crash site because he's the, the, the man that owns this land. So kind of just to back up a little bit on a couple of things, um, th this, this crash allegedly took place in July of 1947. Uh, that's the, you know, the kind of this hallmark date, really, for those who study UFOs. But that, that summer, there was a, a great time of UFO activity. In, in basically June and July of 1947, there were hundreds of UFO reports. Now, there, there'd been, you know, some from ancient times, you know, people would report things that were strange, but there was a real cluster of them in June and July of 1947. Um, Kenneth Arnold in Washington State was a pilot and in the summer of 1947, in June, he saw several uh, flying disks in the air. And he's the one that came up with the, the title of flying saucers. And it, the, really, the, the mother of all of these sightings, though, is, again, this alleged crash outside of Roswell, New Mexico, in July, early July of 1947. So in August of 1996, my wife and I were there. Um, she was there with me, had our, had our two boys, and I left them for several hours and uh, met the, the man who owns the land there named Hub Corn. And so I drove about 20 miles north of Roswell and met Hub there along the highway. I left my car there and drove down into this uh, place that's on his land. 
and uh, we he he picked me up in his in his blue uh, Ford pickup, and we drove back in there and really slowly. He, he owns hundreds of thousands of acres there. And he drives me back to this place, and I recognized it from the books I'd read about UFOs. There's kind of a uh, over in the distance. There's just a little raised area and a royo that's there where supposedly this space spacecraft had had uh, landed, and there was kind of had supposedly been this debris field there. And so he brought me out there to uh, to let me look around and see this. There was another couple that he brought out there as well earlier. They were still there. And so I was looking around, just uh, talking to him, asking some various questions. And while we were there, a van pulled up. This van pulls up and a, a whole group of people began to get out of this van. And they had a lot of uh, video and recording equipment. And you know, I thought this fascinating. What are these people doing out here? So I asked Cub Corn, I said, who are these uh, people who are here? And he said, well, they're with a, a program called Strange Universe. And they, they kind of just look at, you know, kind of strange phenomenon and, and, and uh, do uh, uh, TV programs about those things. So they got out and, and a man walked over there and he was uh, probably around in his 70s at that time, late 60s or in his 70s. And uh, he had a, a Kansas State uh, ball hat on. And we began to talk and, and I asked him his name. He said his name was Frank Kaufman. And I said, well, uh, Frank, what are you doing out here? And he said, well, I'm one of the original men who came out here to this crash site in uh, July of 1947. We were, we were the first few people here uh, to this crash site. And so immediately my interest uh, was piqued. And he said, you know, Strange Universe contacted him to be on this program and to, to come out there and be with them. And he said, you know, for a lot of years, he really hadn't talked about what happened. The government had kind of sworn him to secrecy, but... He said, I'm a grandfather now. And, you know, a lot of times gone by. So he says, I'm telling people now uh, what, what I saw when I came here. So I asked him, I said, well, do you mind telling me what you saw when you came out here? And I actually wrote down years ago uh, what he said. And so uh, I want to just read, read to you what I wrote down after I got finished with my conversation with him. I said, uh, Mr. Kaufman shared his eyewitness account of the crash site as he saw it in July 1947. He pointed out where he saw the vessel resting and described it. It was unlike anything he'd ever seen before. I listened intently as he said that it contained no fuel, but had pods underneath, which experts believe somehow extracted power from the atmosphere. However, the most interesting information he shared concerned the aliens that he observed. He told me that one humanoid looking being about four feet tall was lying on the ground not far from the ship. He pointed out the place uh, where, the being, where, where he saw this being. He took me over and showed me. And then he said another being was halfway out of the hole in the side of the vessel, and three other beings were inside what he called uh, this spacecraft. And he said all of the beings were still and lifeless. He talked further about the disposal of the bodies and the cleanup of this debris field that, that it was left behind. And he spoke very matter-of-factly to me about, about the entire incident. And so we talked in detail about this and, and I said, well, could this have been a weather balloon? Because initially when the reports came out, it came out that this was an alien spacecraft. But about a day or two later, in all the papers in that area, it began to say, no, this was just a weather balloon. And he told me, he said, there's no way it's a weather balloon. And I said, did it look like a helicopter? Did it look like an airplane? He said, it didn't look like anything that he had ever, uh, ever witnessed before. And you know, it's interesting standing there talking to somebody like this, because, again, this is a man who's a grandfather. Again, he's a city. He's wearing a, you know, a baseball cap that has the Kansas State uh, mascot on there. Um, he's not being paid any money to talk about this. And yet he's telling me uh, what he saw. And again, the, the thing that was the most fascinating to me, I think, is, you know, these humanoid uh, figures or humanoid beings that he saw the, the lying there. And so you know, that caused my mind to start really whirling and, and stirring. And, and yeah, I, I, I was a skeptic. I mean, I admit I was a doubter about all this when I went out there that day. I'd read some books about it, but I thought, you know, a lot of people are probably just kind of making these things up or just kind of stretching and exaggerating the truth. Well, that was really, again, the kind of the mother of all of these UFO events. And every year in, uh, in Roswell, there's a great, a big UFO festival. And back in 2021, was uh, the largest one they've ever had. And that was even kind of you know, when COVID was still around. So this is something that people are extremely interested in, obviously, today. So, you know, one of the questions that comes up then about all of this, when, when, when someone thinks about this or starts to think it through is, 
what are these UFOs? And that's what people are trying to answer today, really all kinds of experts out there, is that they're seeing all these images that have been released by the government that they've never seen before. Uh, the research I've done tells me that about 95% of what people claim to see is, is explainable. It's, it's natural, naturally occurring events. It can be you know, lights in the sky or again, weather balloons or satellites or, or all kinds of things. So most of it, it has some kind of a natural explanation. But there's about 5% of what is happening that, that is, that is not, not explainable naturally. It, it, they defy the laws of, of, of physics. And so when people want to think about this 5% and think about how to explain this, there's several different theories that people have. Some will say that these are maybe test aircraft or, or test you know, spaceships that the, the United States government has that, are, that we don't really know about. You know, maybe there, there's something out in, you know, hidden out in Area 51 in Nevada. Uh, maybe it's you know, some kind of aircraft or, or spacecrafts that, that uh, China has or that Russia has or that some other nations have that's you know, some kind of really advanced uh, technology. But again, if you're watching these videos, I mean, you'll see a, a, you know, some object you know, that's going along at you know, an, an unbelievable speed and just makes a, a, a right turn. And so they defy the law of physics. And you'd think if, if Russia or China or some enemy of the United States had this unbelievable kind of advanced technology, they'd probably use it to take over the world. So it doesn't seem likely to me that this is some human uh, technology that's been in invented. Um, others will say, uh, many people say, well, these are aliens. You know, they're, they're beings from you know, somewhere, uh, from some uh, further galaxy than, than we live in that are traveling here and uh, that are investigating us or gaining information or want to have contact with us. So there's all kinds of theories. And of course, there's all kinds of movies you know, about that, the War of the Worlds and you know, Independence Day and E.T. And there's this incredible you know, spate of movies about this because people are fascinated with this topic. Now, people often ask, well, is it possible that there are beings who live on other planets somewhere? I, mean, I guess from our study of the Bible, we'd have to say it's possible, but I don't think it's likely. Um, the Bible gives us no indication that there's any uh, created intelligent life other than angels and human beings here on the earth. And a lot of people that believe in you know, aliens that are coming from other planets, they also believe in evolution. You'll say, well, you know, life evolved here. So, you know, why wouldn't we want to believe that life has evolved, you know, somewhere else on, on other planets? But again, we don't believe in evolution. Uh, we believe that God created the heavens and the earth and that God created the earth and he created the earth in a unique uh, position. And on the earth, he created mankind, who's the, the pinnacle of God's creation that he made in his image. And it seems to me that if God has created beings on other planets somewhere, um, that would go against what the Bible tells us about man being the pinnacle of God's creation made in the image of God. And it, it, it comp it's very complicated theologically because you think if there are beings in other places and, and they've sinned, then what kind of provision has been made for their sin? So to me, it's a, a real complicated issue to talk about, you know, beings that, that live uh, in, in other places. Um, the, the, other, the other explanation for this and the one that makes the most sense to me is that it's possible these parts of uh, the, these events that we can't explain, these UFO events we can't explain, could be uh, demonic. They could be demonic events that are taking place. Now, I can't prove that from the Bible, but we do know that, again, the only, the only created intelligent life we know of from Scripture are human beings and angels. And again, if these, these aren't uh, these aren't being made by humans, these UFOs. They're not from aliens. The only other possible created uh, life that's intelligent are angels. And there's two kinds of angels, according to the Bible. There's, there's good angels and bad angels. There, there's you know, fallen angels and unfallen angels. They're called elect angels and evil angels. And we know that good angels wouldn't be carrying out the kind of activities that we see in UFOs to try to um, you know, uh, confuse people or to cause uh, this kind of sensation or to cause people to think there's beings that live on other planets. So that kind of leaves me with the conclusion that it's possible, very possible, I think likely, that some of what's happening, again, a lot of this activity that we can't explain is being carried out by a demonic spirits. Now, that raises a lot of questions whenever I say that, but 
that's what I'm, I'm, I'm brought to really my own conclusion, because when you see this happening, it, it causes a lot of distress in people when they see you know, events taking place that they can't explain. Uh, you know, again, you know, craft going at this aircraft or, or these spacecraft going at these incredible speeds and then, you know, making these 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 45 degree angle turns. I mean, it causes people distress. Um, it causes deception and it causes distraction in, in people's minds. So I don't think this is something that good angels that unfallen angels would be doing. So my theory is, is that these are fallen angels taking some kind of material form. Now, that's a whole nother question. People will say, well, how could these demonic beings take this kind of material form? Well, we know throughout the Bible that angels often take material form. You know, there's um, two angels that come and appear to, uh, to Lot, you know, in Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, angels appear to people throughout the Old Testament. In fact, sometimes when they appear, they look like human beings. Uh, because over in the book of Hebrews, it says that, you know, some people have entertained angels without knowing it or unaware so they can take on some kind of form, even a, a human or a humanoid type form, um, clearly from, from the Old Testament tells us that. So they can materialize and you say, well, you know, can they create you know, these kind of craft that they fly around in or move about in? Um, I, I don't see why it's impossible for them to do something like that. So my understanding is these would be these demonic spirits to, to deceive people, to distract um, to make people believe in alien life on other planets, to maybe confirm their belief in evolution. There's a lot of reasons why I think demons would be involved in this kind of activity. But, but a couple of things I wanted to mention about this I think are interesting. Whenever these um, entities appear, that no one tracks them like from outer space. They don't have radar and they see them coming in from outer space from far away. And then they appear here and then track them going and leaving and going uh, far away again. They just materialize and they dematerialize. They just appear and then they disappear. One, one man who's a very well-known um, st student of, U of, of UFOs is named John Keel. If you read any UFO writings, you'll see his name there a lot. This is a really uh, interesting quote that he gives. Here's what he believes about this 5% that we can't explain of these UFO sightings. He says they're not extraterrestrial beings or spacecraft, but they're ultra terrestrial interdimensional beings. Now that's a lot said there. They're not extraterrestrial. They're not spacecraft. They're ultra terrestrial. Uh, they're interdimensional beings. In other words, they're beings that can move from one dimension uh, to another dimension. Or again, they're what we could call uh, ultra terrestrials. They, they exist in some parallel dimension and they can just appear in our dimension and disappear. And again, that, that's how angels are often pictured in scripture, good angels when they appear. And we, we would assume that, that evil angels can do uh, the same thing. In fact, I don't have time to get into this today. I'm sure um, Jimmy's talked about this before on, on uh, endtimes.com, but the whole um, situation back in Genesis chapter six of the sons of God who come into the daughters of men, I take that there that those are fallen angels um, who took on a uh, human form. So they take on this form, they, they come into this dimension and they just disappear and, and they leave this dimension. So again, I don't think these are test aircraft or spaceships. I don't think they're aliens. I think these are uh, demonic beings. Now you say, why would they do this? Again, why would these demonic beings want to do this? Well, to, I think, deceive people into believing, again, there's life on other planets, to believe in evolution. Um, I think um, another reason they can do this is just to distract people away from the truth of the gospel, uh, the truth of the Bible, just to, to get people obsessed with life on other planets and extraterrestrials to take their focus um, off of God and spiritual things and God's word. But another reason could be a setup for the end times so that one of these days when millions of people disappear all over the earth in the event we know as the rapture, there'll be a ready explanation for this. A lot of people will say, well, this was just um, um, these UFOs, these you know, beings from other planets who came and you know, evaporated people off the earth or snatched them away or, or took them in some kind of a you know, mass you know, alien body snatching um, event that took place. So, you know, with all the deception in our world today, that's the kind of a thing that people could believe. It's a kind of deception Satan may be set up again for an explanation uh, for this event we know as the rapture. 
Uh, one other thought about this that I think is, uh, is fascinating is when you think about the, the year of 1947, that's when uh, the, the UFO phenomenon really began in a massive way. Again, you got hundreds of UFO reports in June and July of 1947. And really, a lot of this didn't really become disseminated broadly till 1948. But think about the, uh, the convergence of events back in 1947 and 48. It's almost like uh, things went into to hyperdrive really in those two years. So you have this whole UFO phenomenon that really um, takes off with you know, Kenneth Arnold's sighting of the flying saucers and the event in Roswell. Um, also in 1947, the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered. Um, another thing that happens uh, during that period of time is basically the, the, the space age began as, as liquid hydrogen was developed that allowed um, spacecraft to, to ultimately come into place. Kind of the nuclear age really began, began uh, during that time. You also have, of course, in uh, on, on May the 14th of 1948, the rebirth of the modern state of Israel, which is really the super sign of the end times. Um, almost all the other prophecies of the end times hinge one way or another on Israel existing. And you also have the beginnings of the European common market in the years after World War II, which I think is an event that really began kind of in an embryonic form, the reuniting or reviving of the Roman Empire that I think is predicted in Daniel chapter two and Daniel chapter seven. So you have all this, this cluster convergence of events, 1947 and 1948, uh, UFOs, um, Israel becoming a nation, the nuclear age, the space age, uh, the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, um, which are very important for biblical study, and also the beginning of uh, the European uh, common market. So all those things happening in this short period of time, I think, again, were kind of put uh, the events of the end times on a fast track. And from that point of, in, in time, things have taken off. And with Israel in place, the, the, the lights are kind of lighting up along the, the uh, runway, if you will, preparing the way for the coming of Jesus Christ. So I don't think this UFO phenomenon that began back in the late 40s is accidental and it's kind of its confluence with all these other events that are taking place. Um, I think it's causing a lot of deception and distraction in our days and ultimately can even be used by people someday uh, to come up with some explanation for what takes place um, at the rapture. Well, thank you for uh, listening. I appreciate you taking time to, uh, to watch this teaching. Um, if you're a subscriber, uh, please stay tuned uh, for the news and the Q&A segment. I want to thank you for watching this Tipping Point clip, and I want you to subscribe to the channel. I want you, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and click subscribe there. And thank you for watching and subscribing. I want you to join our Tipping Point community at endtimes.com. For $7 a month, you can subscribe, and you have a seven-day free trial. So if you just want to check it out for seven days, Go on endtimes.com, check us out for seven days, but I can promise you, you're going to love the content. You're going to be getting the Tipping Point show, the full show, every single week, as well as articles and video content from great teachers like Greg Laurie and Mark Hitchcock and, of course, myself. Be sure to subscribe to be notified when we release more videos like this. God bless you.